Perhaps the most fundamental basis for nuclear science is the concept of atoms. Atoms are small and discrete units that make up all matter in the world, and they're comprised of three fundamental particles. The positively charged proton, the neutrally charged neutron, and the negatively charged and also much smaller electron. Let's begin by taking a look at the proton. Protons are found in the center of the atom in what is known as the nucleus. The number of protons is responsible for determining which element the atom is identified as. For our case, let's start with two protons in our nucleus giving us a helium atom. Two particles of the same charge, though, are bound to repel each other, so we need to add something to our nucleus that's going to help space out the protons and hold it together. Let's now take a look at neutrons. Neutrons as well are located in the nucleus of the atom and are roughly the same size as the protons that we had added earlier. The number of neutrons in an atom determines which isotope the atom is identified as. There are often more neutrons than protons in most stable atoms, but for our case, let's bring in two neutrons, giving us what is known as helium-4. How do the neutrons help stick the nucleus together, though, if they don't have any charge? The answer is what is known as the strong nuclear force. How this force actually works is beyond the scope of this video, but the important thing is that it is, as the name suggests, an extremely strong force between all particles that's able to overpower the repulsion between the protons. The catch with the strong force, though, is that it only works over extremely small distances, but fortunately for us, the distance between protons and neutrons in the nucleus is often sufficient for the strong force to hold things together, so our atom here won't fall apart. The last thing that we need to add to our atom to make it complete are a few electrons. Where the electrons are located in the atom is a little bit less straightforward than the other two fundamental particles, though. The description of the electron's location has changed over the years as the atom becomes more understood, but what's important to understand is that electrons are found in various energy levels around the nucleus. The farther away from the nucleus, the higher the energy. The Bohr model of the atom's electrons will be sufficient for our purposes, so we'll put electrons in energy level rings around our nucleus. Electrons either have to receive energy to go up at an energy level or give off energy in order to drop down to an energy level, but for the most part they will stay in the energy level that they begin in. The number of electrons in an atom determines whether or not it is an ion, but we'll just put an equal number of electrons to protons, giving us a neutral helium-4 atom. A few more things that are important to understand for our future videos are the mass of an atom and isotope notation. The mass of protons and neutrons is extremely small, around 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and electrons are even smaller at 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Since these numbers are so small, the mass of atoms and other particles is commonly measured in atomic mass units. Another very common unit for, the, for mass in the nuclear world is MeV, which is mega electron volts, per C squared, which is the speed of light squared. We'll talk about where these units come from in our next video, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. In order to get the mass of the atom, we simply sum the mass of all the protons and neutrons. Although the electrons technically contribute a small amount of mass, they're almost always ignored since they're more than a thousand times smaller than a single proton or neutron. With regards to isotope notation, we begin by first putting the chemical symbol for our element. In the bottom left of the symbol, we indicate the number of protons, and in the top left we indicate the number of nucleons, which is the number of protons and neutrons combined. If the atom is an ion, we can notate that in the top right of the symbol, and we generally refer to an atom as its name and number of nucleons, such as helium-4 or uranium-235. Hopefully, with all of this, you now have a decent understanding for the basics of atomic structure. In the next video, we'll be talking about nuclear reactions and how mass is converted into energy. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you learned something.